recording. So are you seeing a screen here that says Edsby and Twine? Is that? I do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Great. So I was actually on camera that whole time and didn't even know it. I wasn't even looking at the camera. So yeah. sorry about I'm that. Sorry. I assumed you couldn't see me. Um, not a big deal. So, uh, all right. A little bit of background first. Um, so my company, I am not Edsby. Um, my company is actually based out of Atlanta or just outside of Atlanta. Um, and we've been working with uh, K through 12 education for about 11 years now, uh, helping with collaboration solutions that really help schools to, to optimize efficiency, right? On um, everything from backend systems to communication with parents and students and so forth. Uh, we began working with Edsby about eight years ago, and we specifically began looking at independent schools um, because what we found is Edsby, and in fact, there are a number of really great tools for large school systems. Finding things uh -huh. that slow down are sometimes challenging, and so that was one piece that we were looking to, to solve. And for us, there are kind of three areas that we focus about when we look at how, how Edsby is set up to, to help schools and, and the service that we've put together. One piece of this is this notion of having really consistent personalized communication. So whether it's whether we're talking about communication to parents or students for that matter, the idea that we're communicating not just, you know, how did you do on a test last week, but what's coming up and what's happening in the school generally and make sure people are sort of informed and in touch with what's going on with the program. Um, is, okay. is parent outreach or parent involvement a... Uh, a concern for your program or do you work primarily with the students directly and not so much with parents? We would like and Michelle my director is here also Gary. So oh, she is great. As well. But we definitely want parents to be able to log on and be able to see grades. That, that's what we have currently. Okay. To where they can log on, they can have access. Mm-hmm. Okay, good, good. So again, it's one of, one of kind of the three main areas that we focus on. Because um, what, what we've seen is that when parents do know what's happening, they're able to support their students and you get better outcomes. So drawing those parents in with, with you know, good information and keeping your know, current information is really important. Um, kind of the second piece is the back end, the operational piece. So providing a great grade book and attendance system and having centralized resources so that uh, so you can run re your reports and get those to your eight school districts. Or if you get a phone call from a parent saying, I need to talk with you about how Sally is doing in, in her English class, right? You as the program administrator might be able, to, might need to go in and say, okay, well, let me see what's happening in English. Oh yeah, I see she missed three assignments. And, you know, having that centralized place where you can go to, to see everything happening with the program and with the students um, is, a, a, again, a really important piece, just operating professionally and, and, and serving, uh, you're serving our kids well. And then the third piece, which you already talked about a little bit in terms of N-grade, is providing that online environment, which really can go beyond just here's a paper to hand in, um, but can also then extend to here's a question that I want you to think about overnight, or I want you to, to write back in, or we're going to have a little bit of a conversation online. The notion that we can extend what goes on in traditional face-to-face -face teaching and have a secure, academically appropriate online place where the kids can engage and they can do peer teaching or you can do flipped classroom kinds of activities where they're, you know, they're watching a video at night and then they come in and use your class time to actually work with the new concepts and those kinds of things. Um, so those are sort of the three main areas that we function in. Um, any questions okay. about this? Is this, no. is this on target? So they, are able, they are able to do testing and assignments also. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. um, so on the back end, we work with a tool called Edsby. And I don't remember, did you come to us through Edsby or did you find us through our, our Twine yes. site? I, I called Edsby because um, I had gotten some really good reviews there. And I called Edsby and because we are on a smaller scale, mm -hmm. they recommended your program. Perfect. Perfect. And that's, that's exactly what I was going to talk about. So, when, when we roll this out, all of your teachers, your parents, your students, all they ever see and know and interact with is Edsby. So they're just using the Edsby platform, which is great. Um, and Edsby really okay. is, it's, it, we've been, like I say, in education technology for 21 years. Edsby is really, really exciting. And they're getting all kinds of awards and recognition for it, which is great. The challenge that we encountered was Edsby was designed for these large school districts. 
And one of the assumptions in EDSB, right, is that if you're, you're a district with 80 schools, we're going to set up this sort of dedicated EDSB cluster. We're going to connect up to a district-run student information system. Um, you know, they're probably running PowerSchool or Infinite Campus or Skyward or, you know, whatever it might happen to be. And EDSB was designed to work in those large environments by tying to some existing system of record and pull down all of the student data and the class schedules and the parent demographic information. And so EDSB was really designed sort of to be slave to that SIS and doesn't have its own tools for adding a user account built into it. And what we realized as we began talking with a lot of the independent schools that we've been working with for a long time is EDSB, the, the feature set is perfect, right? They want the grade book and they want the, the, you know, the online secure social classroom and the attendance tools. But a lot of these smaller programs didn't already have an SIS or they didn't have one that they liked. And so what Twine is basically is designed for schools with small to medium enrollment. And what we do is just like you can have a school district with 80 schools, we have a single Twine customer, a single twine, twine entity, and we can have individual schools come on just like we have you know, 80 schools within a district. And rather than starting by integrating to an on-premise system, we have our own what we call the Twine SIS. It's really just the management console that we use so that when you have to enroll a student, you put them in the SIS and Edsby pulls that down, you enroll them in a class and Edsby knows to put them in that class. And it's just the way that we manage our Edsby environment is with the Twine SIS. Any okay. questions about this? No. Okay, great. It's what's what's been really nice about it is we, you know it allows us to get sort of the economy of scale that the big big districts have without having to do that you know that that, that initial integration. So we can take that and, and apply it for smaller environments, which has really been been why we've been focusing on this market. So um, in terms of what EDSB does, right at its core, um, and and it does some other uh, things as well. But at its core, it's about things like that social classroom space so we can post news and announcements and have online conversation and let folks know here's the schedule and here are the tests coming up next week and so forth. It does have a facility for school news and broader group collaboration also. So if we want to share information just among staff, we can create a group where, where staff can share those, those you know, notes. We can talk about what's going on at our staff meeting next week and so forth. It incorporates our structured data like gradebook and attendance and timetables and all of that, um, as well as things like report cards and analytics. So it really ties together all of those day-to-day -day tools that folks need. And then okay. um, outside that EDSB box, right, we have the, the Twine SIS, which we use as our management console on the left. We also integrate with cloud services like Google Apps for Education or O365. Um, so your students, I'm guessing, come from a variety of environments. Do you use either of those tools for your staff today? Uh, this is Michelle. Uh, we, use, we use Google Drive, the Google Suite, um, mm -hmm. with our staff. We are unable to use it with our students because they don't all have an email address. Right. The same domain. So okay. we would like Sure, sure. Okay, so so the good news is, right, for your staff, they can use their, with our with our Google integration, they can use their existing Google username and password to sign in, or if they're, if they're signed in, we just hit the button and they go. Um, they can access files right out of Google Drive and share them. And for your students, what's nice about this is this allows you then to have that one-on-one -on -one communication with all of the students without them having to have an email address, right? We set them up in Edsby, they sign in directly to that with their local Edsby credentials and then they can interact with all of the, the materials that your teachers are sharing. So. Great, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any questions on this before we jump in and look at the software directly? No. Okay. Okay, great. Great. Um, so let's switch gears for a second. I'm gonna uh, switch to a different window. All right. Um, you should now be seeing a browser with an EDSB login window. Are you seeing that? I do. Yeah, okay. we do. Great, great. And I want to mention also, um, I'm showing it to you on my computer because that's the easiest way to demonstrate. Um, there is yeah. a free EDSB app for you know iOS, for um, Android, as well as Windows. And what we see okay. is the vast majority of our students and parents will use their phones. Um, students will sometimes use computers also. Parents are almost always on their phone. Um, but that app is, uh -huh. just download it right from the App Store. And everything that we're seeing here, um, for the most part, everything we're seeing here is going to work the same way on the mobile app. 
The only exception okay. to that is as a teacher, I can't open up the grid view of the grade book and enter new grades. But for our students right. and our parents, they can see those grades. So that's the only thing that we don't okay. translate to the phone. Um, okay. but, but otherwise, everything we're doing here, we can, we can do anywhere. Um, so I'm going to log in here. Uh, let me log in as our I've got a high school teacher. Um, I think that's the right account. All right, so I'm starting with the teacher view. And we're logged in. This is the Live EdsB system. Um, I'm connected to our Twine Academy, which is sort of a sandbox school where we just set up you know, temporary accounts for demonstration purposes. But everything you're seeing here, this is live. So when a page loads, it's really loading that, that quickly, right? It really is this, this quick and in the interface. It's all, you know, it's all the real system here. So, um, so I'm logged in right now as somebody that has several English classes. You can see I'm teaching a writing class and a literature class and a world lit and so forth. Um, all of this is configured in the management console. So there's usually you know, one or two people in the back office that, that are responsible for knowing who's teaching what class and setting all that up. As a teacher, I log in and it's all right there for me. So I don't have to do any setup. I'm not enrolling kids myself or sending out you know, magic codes to parents. Um, across the top, I have our news and announcements. And these are system-wide so that if you have anything that you want to, there are successes that you want to celebrate. There's some big event coming up that you want to make sure everybody sees. When you add it up here to what we call the News River, this is available to every staff member, every parent, and every student that logs in. And so it's a great place, again, it's really community building, great place to let folks know what's going on at the school or here are some, some great things that are happening in our program, that kind of thing. All right. Um, you'll see over to the right, I have a calendar. And the calendar is compiled by Edsby. And it's a unique calendar view for every person. So I'm logged in right now, and I'm associated with six different classes and a bunch of groups. My calendar is pulling together my events based on the school I belong to and the classes I belong to and the groups. So we do the same thing for students and parents. When a student logs in, they're going to see all of the assignments and all of the events and all, you know, everything that's happening based on the events that you define at the school level and for all the individual classes that they're enrolled in. So everybody has this you know, current uh, calendar based on the things that they're doing. And we do support you know, block scheduling. If you have you know, different classes on different days of the week or you've got an A day and a B day, whatever it is, all of that is, is accommodated in our scheduling system. Okay. So, um, and then in the middle we have groups. And these are actually similar to classes, and we can, we can drill into this in a minute, but the idea is sometimes we have groups of folks that we want to be able to pull together. For example, we have you know, a staff group. And this might be where we, where we post our uh, agenda before our, our weekly staff meeting. And we can say, you know, here's what's on the agenda. Do you have anything that you want to add? And other people can come in and they can respond to it, right? Um, and it works. What's nice about the user interface is when people see this, they say, oh, this is like Facebook, right? This is like Instagram. I know how to do this. Um, so most of what we do in Edsby is designed to be that easy to use, right? So I would say, hey, um, you know, here's the agenda uh, for our meeting. Right, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to you know put it put in whatever these things are one two three, and I share this, and all of our staff now know that you know Mr. Lambert has posted here's this thing, and other people can come in and reply. So, functionally, we don't have to spend a lot of time training people. Here's how to use it. Right, they see this and they sort of get that intuitively. Any any questions about this? I don't think so. Thank you. Oh. Okay, great, great. Um, let's look at a classroom for a minute, because those are similar, but a little bit different. So as a teacher, right, when I come into the system, the place where I'm gonna spend most of my time is in my classes. And yeah. so when I come in and I look, here's uh, you know, world literature class, and you can see that as a teacher, I've come in and I've posted things because it's a test system. I don't have a lot of posts from other folks. Here's a question from a student, right? Um, and so we can have that, that conversation front and center. But we also surface other kinds of information, right? So I can use it, right? Um, you know, here's a handout for tomorrow. And I can go right to my Google Drive, for example, and I can you know, pull something out of Drive. Or just for simplicity here, I think I've got some files, right? Here's um, maybe a, uh, I have a PowerPoint? Whatever, I've got. Oh, this will work fine. Here's a, a Microsoft Word file, right? So here's a handout that we're going to use for our class tomorrow. And I come in and I share that document, and all my kids have access to it, which is you know, pre pretty easy. Um, but you'll notice I can also post other kinds of content. So I can add an event, right? And maybe we're going to go on a field trip for this class, and we're going to 
go to the, the local theater, whatever it might happen to be. When I add that event, it gets added into the calendar. Um, we can add assessments. And what's cool about this is the assessment actually gets tied into a whole bunch of other features. We want this to be that centralized repository. So if I've got um, whatever, a one page paper, and this is going to be, uh, we'll call it an essay, and right, I can set up my units. You'll notice there's a, a place here where I can also tie this to standards. Um, and I should probably stop there. Do you, um, do you utilize, whether it's Common Core or Arkansas standards, um, do, do you have a need to track activity or lessons or learning based on standard today? Only in like one or two classes. We are mostly concurrent credit or college class offerings. Okay. Okay, well, great. Um, what this allows you to do then is have that, have that mapping. So for the one or two classes where you need it, right, we can go in and uh, I'm not actually tied to a course here, right? So here we'll call that a ninth grade English course, right? And it allows us to go in and say, you know, yeah, this particular lesson, um, we're gonna talk about writing and it ties to these two standards that we have, right? So we'll go ahead and, and does, tag. Does your standard database include career and technical education? So we actually can load in any set of standards that you would like to provide. Okay. Um, so we, we already have um, schemas for things like Common Core, but we can, we can uh, as, as long as it is hierarchical, um, if you can provide that standard for us, we can actually import it. Great, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Could absolutely. you go, go back to the note? I think you had a question on that page. Well, actually, just wherever you are, if you'll scroll down, where mm -hmm. it says post shared a one class. Oh, post yeah. Class. Yes. I wanted yes, to see yes, what yeah. the other options were there. Yeah. So it's nice about, so if I've got three sections of this class, I can come in here and I can say, let's go ahead and post the same material to those other three sections. Great. Thank yeah, you. which is a really nice time saver. And this works across whether it's a note or a handout or an assessment, it, it works the same way. Right. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of nuance here that really saves a ton of time, right? It's, it's, it's all the little things. Um, so, so we've got our paper, maybe I'm going to have them handed down online, right? Um, as a file upload or I'll keep this simple right now. I'll say none. Um, I'm going to put a due date on this. We'll have this be due Tuesday or uh, I guess Thursday. Um, notice there's also a check for conflicts. Um, I don't know if this comes up in your program, but some of our schools like to know what other assignments are already due. And so what this is doing is it's looking for the students enrolled in my class, and it looks at all their other classes, and it will show me, you know, these three students have these other six assignments due. Can I give you a scenario and you show me how this program can address that? Sure, yeah. So we share a common computer lab and what we've run into in the past couple of weeks is more than one teacher expecting to use it on one day. Is there a way that like mm. computer lab looks for this class and then the other classes could see that it was booked for that class so teachers would know, oh, I can't go into the computer lab today, it's already booked. That's a really great question. Um, resource scheduling is not a core function, but I'm wondering if there's a way for us to do that through a group calendar. Um, Probably. Or maybe through a class calendar. I, I think we might be able to find a workaround for that. Let me, if you don't I, mind. I let like me, that check for conflict option. If that check for conflict option is available, like basically anywhere else, I think that would address that. Yeah, no, it's a great idea. Um, let me do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a quick note here. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to type this one because my handwriting is terrible. Um, but can we uh, set up computer lab calendar? Uh, for booking, essentially. Um, Actually, a tech, a tech center calendar in general, because we might have um, a program scheduled that day that maybe the instructor needs or has forgotten about. Mm -hmm. So tied to any group calendar right. that maybe that would work. Yeah. Okay. The the calendaring is pretty sophisticated. Um, I let, let let me check into that, and I'll I'll get an answer for you after we get off the call okay. here. Yeah. All right. Great. Um, so, so back to our assessment. So I'm going to assign my kids a, a one page paper. Um, notice that under grade schemes, we have a lot of flexibility here. 
And one of the things that we do with every school we set up is we talk with them about what are the grade schemes that you want to use. So if you're using letter grade, do you use pluses and minuses? And what should, you know, what's the percentage range for an A plus versus an A versus an A minus? All of that gets mapped as part of our setup. But we can also do custom schemas. So, you know, we work with, with IB schools where what they want is basically a one through seven. Or we work with, you know, elementary programs where it's something like excellent, good, satisfactory, needs improvement. Um, do you have any... Uh, I guess, particular grading schemas or needs that, that you use that might be unusual? Well, we do grade every student on what we call a professionalism rubric. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like a participation grade, but we are geared towards workforce training, so mm -hmm. we call it professionalism. So for okay. every instructor in in-grade, we kind of backdoored into creating an assignment that that, that was the rubric, we had that rubric input. Mm -hmm. I suspect that your I suspect you have an easier option because an ingrade it did not always work the way that we wanted it to. Okay, yeah. And is that sort of an end of term or end of quarter piece that goes on to the report? No, we, we would like a weekly grade on it and we're getting maybe every two weeks a grade on it right now. Gotcha. Every student in every class. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so we do actually, you'll see, I've got an option here for rubric and we do support you building rubrics like that, where you can have not just a score of one through four, but the description of what that means. Um, and, and that would probably be a, a perfect match for what, what you're wanting to do there. If we are grading a student on that rubric, is there an option for leaving like commentary or feedback as to why they got the score they got? That yes. The student can see? Yes, absolutely. So let's, um, I don't know if I have any rubrics set up here. But let me see. Ninth grade writing rubric. Let's use that. So I've just set this up, and we're gonna we're gonna uh, record this based on a rubric. Um, I still need to put in a weight, um, and uh, that just tells it how much this particular assessment will will uh, will be counted relative to the other assessments. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my feed. And note, right, what I did is I announced it, right? I, I announced the assessment in the feed here. We've got a one-page paper that's due Thursday. By creating this, because it has a time and date, it also goes into the calendar automatically. It also goes into our content view. So we actually have a whole planner tool where if you want to share content or if you want to reuse content from one semester to another, we can build out these units with different content. Um, you can see I've used one-page paper a lot. Um, but when I teach World Lit next year, right, I can actually come in and say, I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole intro unit that includes these resources and these quizzes and just paste it into my new class and reuse all of this. So it makes it really nice for that. And because this is an assessment, when I go into the grade book now, we're going to have a column. So here it is. Here's our, our one page paper. We uh, graded this on a rubric. Uh, this is not the most meaningful rubric we've ever put together. <laughs> Um, but the idea is, right, we can say in this case we've got a four-point scale, and a four would be, you know, um, excellent clear use of language yeah. and, and so forth. So we'd actually have a description in each of these. Um, so, it. again, not a great example because I didn't set the rubric well, but uh, we'll, we'll say Palmer got, you know, a four on use of language and a three on clarity, whatever that might happen to be. All right. And what this allows us to do is go through and mark each of our kids. So Sally's getting a three and a three and Sam's getting a four and a four, whatever it might be. We can also okay. go to a, um, a detail view here where we can add comments for this. And this works for anything. It doesn't have to be a rubric. So even if they got an A, B, C, D or a percentage grade, we always have the ability of coming in and saying, you know, great work. Or... Um, you know, um, you know, I uh, appreciate your attention to this. Let's also focus on this other thing we talked about, whatever it might happen to be. And okay. when I've filled this out, uh, when I hit the share button, we share whatever the score is. In this case, they'll get the full rubric along with the comments. With just that student? Each student sees just their own grade and their own comments, yes. Okay, can I ask you, um, we have disciplinary issues, obviously. Um, but we also have what we call a pro point system. So we give students points for going above and beyond this, our standards of professionalism and they get rewards based on that. Mm -hmm. Is there, and it's not a grade. It's like, it's, it's tracking behavior. Yeah. That, it's positive reinforcement, just tracking points. Mm -hmm. um, how would, is there a functionality for that sort of thing? Both tracking, 
discipline and good behavior. Yeah, absolutely. So are you wanting to track that on a per class basis or overall per student? Um, per student. They, they track mm -hmm. per student. Okay, perfect. So we've got a really cool thing here. So uh, here's Palmer Armstrong, right? He's one of our students. One of the things that Edsby pulls together is what we call a student panorama. And this is a staff only view of everything going on that, that we know about this student. So as a staff member that has Palmer in one of my classes or as a school administrator, I can come in and look at Palmer's, Palmer's panor panorama at any time. And at a glance, I can see what classes he's taking and how he's doing in those classes. Right. I can see here as parents, if I need to reach out to them, right, I've got their phone numbers, or I can send a message right from here. We have a place for what we call shared observations here through the middle, right? So, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have clicked on that, sorry. Um, with the observations, the idea here is um, this can be any sort of unstructured uh, um, comment or observation. So, if we know that there's a student who's going to be out for a week, right? We can say, oh, you know, I, I heard the student uh, has a, a sick grandparent, they're gonna have to take a week off. Um, you might wanna be sensitive to, uh, to that when they come back or whatever it might be. Um, and then over here, you'll notice we also have a section specifically for alerts. And what's cool about this is we can use this, so under alerts here, right, we can come in and we can say, yeah, you know what, there was, um, we had a discipline incident today and uh, it was moderate and, uh, you know, got, got got in fight with another student, right, or whatever it is. So this gives us a place to, to record that centrally. And as I update the observation list, as I update these alerts, we actually push this out as a notification to all of the teachers that are working with Palmer. So any teacher that works with Palmer is going to see in their activity feed here, they're going to see this update that Mr. Lambert has updated, uh, you know, this, this behavior incident. Is this on track? Okay, I like that for discipline. But so say that I am Palmer's teacher and Palmer has a good day and I want to give him five pro points and mm -hmm. we track those points over the course of the year. How would I track? Yeah. Like, where is there a way to track points? That's the next thing different? that I need to think about. So one place we might be able to do it. I wonder if what we want to do. So, so discipline, right, doesn't necessarily need to be all negative. And what I'm wondering, do we have the ability, uh, attendance, discipline, educational. This might be something else that I want to think about. Um, right, um, you know, plus five pro points. Right, if we did something like this, right, it's not adding that, can we run a, Is there yeah. a way to run a report then on pro points? Yeah, right, yeah, if we do it this way, we won't be able to run a report. Let me jot that down also. Um, I feel like we can okay. hold the data, but maybe not as structured as you're looking for. So, um, okay. can we record pro points? Um, aggregated per student um, over reporting periods. And so, what happens is, like, as an administrator, so at the end of the quarter, I need to be able to see, okay. Sally has 25 pro points, so she gets a t-shirt for meeting that goal. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So yes. then, you know, that's, that's kind of, Michelle had to step out for a minute, but mm -hmm. that's where, uh, that's where. Mm. Yeah, you know what we could do? Okay, so it's a little bit of a, of a workaround, but one of the things that we have available in, uh, in the Twine implementation of Edsby is we actually have uh, an app. Let me, let me log in as a school administrator for a minute. It looks like, okay. um, it looks like that teacher doesn't have access to the, to the, to the app. But, um, so I'm going to log in here as a school principal. And ah, I don't have it here either. I need to find a place where I have the app installed. Um, we, we support, or there's a special application that we can use for tracking um, uh, service hours. So we have some schools that we work with where the students are expected to spend you know, 20 hours in the community doing community service work. And what I'm okay. thinking we could do is we could use that same application to track points rather than hours. Okay. And that allows, it to build, build, allows us to build it right in here and it does have that reporting. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so one way to do this, I'm, I'm going to make a note for myself, um, might fit with service tracking app. Um, and what I'm going to recommend again, because I don't have it on this server, um, let me follow up with that and I will uh, either send you a video or, I'll, I'll, or we can even set up another time if you want to see it. But, um, but okay. I need to find a place where I have that installed. Okay. So I think that would work. So um, what other questions do you have? I feel like we're, I, I'm glad to go wherever you want to take us with this. <laughs> so what, what, what else would be helpful to you? Show me what kinds of reports you can, do you have other questions, Michelle? Show me what kind of um, reports, like as a mint report, attendance report, show mm -hmm. me how, like if I, daily I have to send the district um, attendance. Right. So mm -hmm. how is that? Sure, sure. So let me right let now. me start. So with attendance, I want to start back with a teacher. Um, just so okay. you can see what that looks like. Um, and it's really easy. It doesn't hang on. And do you take attendance in every course or do you take morning attendance once for the day? I'm sorry, what was that? Do you take attendance once per day or do you take period by period attendance? Uh, period, but we had th we have three classes throughout the day, so each okay. class. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, so we can we can prompt. Yes, for I run the report. I'm sorry, Gary. I run oh, the ahead. report once a day. Okay, that makes sense. So the teachers are submitting their attendance for each of your three That's periods, correct. and then you run the report. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, so what yes. you'll notice here is I'm logged in again as Mr. Lambert. Um, so we can prompt for each class to take attendance individually. So each period we can do that. Um, when we go to take attendance, right, we can say, you know, most of our kids show up most days and I usually mark the exceptions. So if I have any exceptions, we can add comments if we want to and then share with office. So that's really all that's involved. So as a teacher, it's, it's, it's pretty easy, right? We come in, we hit the button and all these kids are here, except, you know, Palmer was out and share with office. So that gives us some data. Okay, let me let me stop you for a minute because I have a question. Mm -hmm. We have sometimes, um, because we have different school districts coming to our campus, we have sometimes where maybe there's something going on at their campus and so they're absent, but it should be marked excused. Yes, absolutely. How can that be accommodated? Right, so you'll notice I've got a button here that says create planned absence. Actually, there are two ways. So if you know in advance, we can actually set up a planned absence for an individual okay. student, even for a whole class. So if this class is going out on a field trip, right, or, or you know, for whatever, whatever is happening, right, we can come in and we can say, we know there's going to be an absence happening on this day. We give it a reason code of, for example, school activity, and that is an excused absence, so it's not going to count against their absence totals. So that's, that's built right in. The other way is when we look at it from the administrator standpoint. So let's get back in as a school principal. And there are several different sort of views and real-time reports that we get. So when I come in, I can see here under attendance, we've got um, you know, uh, two, two incidents that I need to look at right here. All right. Um, so first of all, I can look at this from the perspective of which of my teachers have submitted attendance and which haven't, which is handy. Okay. So if, if you're having an issue with folks uh, getting it in, right, we can see who's supposed to and, and who hasn't done it yet. Um, I can also see here at a glance, right, how many incidents I have, right, how many exceptions. And then the incident view is where I would go in and I would assign reason codes. So I see that Palmer has an absent, um, you know, the teacher didn't put in, in any sort of reason code. And so I, as the administrator, or, you know, office manager, whatever it happened to be, can come in and I can say, yeah, he's out sick today and he's gonna be away for the rest of the day. And so I can save that and we're good to go. Um, on the next one right here is Leslie and um, she is out uh, for a school activity, right? Or it's something that's excused. Um, so we can okay. go and we can, we can go ahead and note that however it might happen to be. Um, and again, we try to make it easy. So here are phone numbers for mom and dad. Uh, so if, if you have to do that kind of follow-up, we try to make it as simple as possible. Any questions okay. on this? Um, I have another question that is attendance related and you may be getting to it, but mm -hmm. um, since we serve the eight districts, what we have to do now is run the report and then sort it by school district and Ingrade did not provide 
um, the kind of data that we could say, this is, you know, Palmer, he's from Armour Hill. This is Sally, she's from Rivercrest. Right. So our way around that was we attached a student ID to every student, and the first three letters of that ID were their school district initials, and that is pulled into our attendance report, and that's how we sort it. Sure. So is there a way to identify the student by district so that when we do run this report, we can sort that? Yeah, we're, we're in a similar situation, um, and I'm sure N-Grade made the same assumptions that we did, right? That when you have schools together in a, students together in a school, that, that we don't have to then track a secondary school. But what we provide that I think is going to make this easy is when you're setting up a student, and let me actually just log in here to the, uh, this is actually our, uh, the, the management console, um, that, that Twine SIS. So when you set up a student, um, in the SIS, and I'm just going to come in here and we'll, we'll look at Palmer's record as an example. Um, the system assigns some default student ID, but then we can also assign a custom ID. And what I'm going to recommend is that we actually utilize that custom ID to, again, we can encode just for the school, or if you have some other correlator, it could be school plus that other correlator. But I think uh, this would be a good place to capture it, and then that custom ID comes through in your in your report, so you can sort it quickly. Okay, thank you. Sure, sure. So, um, yeah. So again, so here are incidents. You'll notice there is an export right here, and this is how we're going to dump that out to uh, you know to, to to CSV, so you can open it in Excel and you know pull your your eight different reports apart. Okay. So, um, does that? Does that cover what you need to see for attendance? Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. Great. Great. Um, another important piece from a reporting standpoint, obviously, is report cards. Um, usually, we start this back on the teacher side as well. But the idea is for every class period that we create, when the end of a term comes around, or I should say the end of a reporting period comes around, right? So we can have you know two quarters inside the, the semester. Um, whenever that reporting period comes around, we're going to prompt the teacher to fill out a report card. And the report card is customized, right? It's going to look something like this. I should actually do it from the teacher standpoint. Hang on one second. Let's go back in. Sorry to be jumping back and forth so much. But that's okay. Okay. But what the teacher gets by default is they're going to get a report card that has certain fields already available for us. You can see here we've got a calculated grade, we've got a place for a comment. What we customize for every site is you can have additional fields here. So if you were reporting um, the uh, professionalism mark, right, we want to roll that up and include that next to the grade, we could have an additional wow. column here that is professionalism and that could be a one through four scale. It doesn't have to be percentage or, or letter grade. We could have something next okay. to that that is class participation that could be on a different scale. So whatever it is that you want to collect from your teachers, we prompt them explicitly for that. And as a teacher, I can come in, I can you know, accept the 92 and put in my comment that says, you know, Palmer is great, right? And just kind of work my way down and submit this to the office just like we do with attendance. So I'm going to fill it in for okay. just my kids in my classes and submit that to the office. And then the office will review and, and actually generate the report cards. Does that make sense? Okay. All yeah. right. So this is step one. The office view of all of this, it's, it's actually kind of similar to the attendance that we just looked at. So when I'm logged in here as a principal again, I have my report card Zoom. And again, I can look at this from the perspective of my teachers. So as my teachers hand these things in, the status goes from gray to yellow telling me it's handed in to green saying it's approved. So we can actually see, again, who's, who's getting these in on time, who's not. We can prompt folks. Um, and then there is sort of the student view, which is where I go and actually print these things. So Palmer, I can see, is in, you know, seven different classes. We don't have any data yet, right? But we can pull all that, the system knows to pull these things together. And then we do a print template that is really based on what you need for output. So um, those vary from, from one school to the next. But we can present, you know, all four quarters with semester averages or whatever needs to happen there. Okay. So does that, does that help? I think so. I think so. Do you have one where you have data to where I can look to see how that pulls it? Um, let me, let me look. I'm not sure. Um, let's go back for a minute. 
you know what I can do? Let me, I'm going to connect to our development server. So this won't be real. Again, it's, it, uh, we, we need to be careful not to expose real, real data. I can't go to our real customers. Um, but I think I can demonstrate it here. Actually, I'm going to go to this one. Um, I think we have some made up data from past semesters for this one. So I'm going to go to report cards and let's go back to maybe quarter one. Okay, we don't have a lot of data here, but. That's okay. Uh, well, okay, let's look at the student view. Yeah, I'm afraid we're not gonna have a lot here to work with, but that's okay. Okay, um, okay here's a student with four. That's better than nothing. All right, so internally, right, we can see this particular student, and again, these are this is all made up data, right? But, um, right, right. right, they got a, a B in biology, you know, A in English composition, et cetera. In their homeroom class, in this case, right, we are, uh, recording learner attributes. So just for homerooms, we're prompting for accept responsibility is dependable, et cetera. And then when we roll all this together into the printed copy, here we go. Here's what this one happens to look like. So right okay. here are those grades. It's calculating an average. Here are those learner attributes that are sort of outside of a specific class. Um, and we roll okay. it together into something that can easily be you know printed and put in a, a, an envelope to send home. Okay. Does so that... Yes, yes. Well, I'm just looking also on the learner attributes. Is that something we can adjust to our professionalism rubric? That's exactly where that would go. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this, this particular report card is specific to the Arbor School. And, mm -hmm. and we started by, you know, by, by saying, what do you need on your report card? And they said, well, here's what we do. And, you know, we, we have these seven learner attributes. And we said, okay, well, no problem. You know, let's just build that okay. in templates. Okay, and then can you just show me what reports as an administrator I have access to? There's a pretty wide, wide range, um, and some of it is through the Edsby side. So let's, let's come back here to our principal account. Um, so one of the things that as an administrator we have access to is what we call our, our, our Zooms. So for example, here's, our, here, here's all 42 of our students that we have in, enrolled in Twine Academy. And you'll notice that at a glance, I can see things like, what is the running average for those students? What do they have in terms of attendance for absence and lates? We can set up risk indicators. So if somebody's absent more than four times, we get a warning in here. Um, and what's cool about this report is we can actually look at this information dynamically. So if I wanna find all of our, um, you know, uh, all of our high school students with an average of 80 or above, right? I can come in here and adjust the sliders and here they are. So maybe this is our honor roll, right? And we can come in and we can export this to Excel or I can send a message to all of the students and their parents and say, hey, congratulations, I'm making honor roll this term, right? So it's, what's cool with the dynamic reporting is, you know, not only does it give you insight into what's going on, but we can actually act on it in meaningful ways, right? Find all the kids with an average below 70 and send a message to those parents or whatever it might happen to be. Okay, wow, okay. Right? Um, so this is some of the sort of ad hoc reporting that we have, and this is visible yes. to us, not just for students, but we can do parent, right, parent ad hoc reports. So let's find all the parents that haven't logged in in more than a week, right? And here they are, okay. and let's send them all a reminder that we want them logging in and checking on their kids' grades, right? Okay. Um, or we can do the same kind of reporting for staff, right? Um, how many posts have our staff members um, you know, uh, how many things have they contributed to their classes and uh, when's the last time they've logged in and all of that. Um, we also, on the management console, have all sorts of reports built into this as well. So for example, under scheduling, when we wanna look at our uh, class lists, right, we can go in and we can generate class lists for all of our classes right out of the management console. Um, or let's okay. look at a, you know, a drop ad report, right? What are all the changes that we had to make in the last week? And we can pull all of that up. Um, for an individual okay. student, what does their schedule look like? So all of that information is pretty readily available through the uh, management console. Okay. Is this, okay. Does that answer your questions? 
Yes, thank you. Okay, thank absolutely. You. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I, I hate to keep um, taking your time. Can you give me an idea on costs? We're obviously on a limited budget for next year. And so I don't want to keep taking your time without knowing what we're looking at cost wise either. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you said, so the, the way this is priced, it is uh, based on student enrollment. Um, mm -hmm. And here, I'm going to actually bring up our website because I don't have our pricing memorized. Um, and I'll send you this URL also because I'm not sure if you got to our, our, our Twine website specifically. Um, but all, so we, we have basically two, two plans that most of our customers, uh, that, that serve most of our customers' needs. Um, Twine okay. Essentials is everything that we looked at today, not including the uh, service hour tracking application. So okay. if you need that service tracking application, we'd want to bump you up to the uh, complete package. Um, in fact, uh -huh. here, let me do this. So on complete, it shows you sort of a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, so the things that are in essential, the things that are incomplete that aren't in essentials, um, we have an emer uh, emergency notification system um, that's mm -hmm. part of complete, the service hour tracking, and then we do a lot with permissions forms. Oh, and actually, that's right, the standards get turned on and complete as well. So we may need to look at it, but just to give you some, some, okay. some numbers here, um, if we assume, let's assume the high end of your range, right? Mm -hmm. So between 200 okay. and 250, the Twine complete package, which includes the, right, the um, service hour tracking, it includes the standards and so forth. Um, we're looking at 750 a month. There's a one-time onboarding of 1,200, and that includes basically all the, all the data imports that we need to do to get your students online. Um, it includes administrator training sessions and also overviews with your staff. So we do a lot with the, the onboarding. Um, okay. The essentials package, I think, comes in at about 50% of that. Let's just double check. Okay. Yeah, 450 a month for essentials. Okay. Oh, excuse me, I'm in the wrong range. Right, we were up to 250, so 375 a month for the essentials. Okay. Does that put okay, us in the right ballpark? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. All right. Now, let me ask you this because sometimes we might start, let's say, the fall semester at 215 students, but then in the spring we've dropped down to 160. Does that pricing change or does it stay continuous? Yeah, we, so if you drop, we can absolutely drop it. That's not a problem. Um, what we usually do is we say, you know, if, if enrollment, if enrollment changes, where, where people usually get upset is when enrollment goes up. And so uh, if, if you start low, we will allow you to go up to 5% beyond whatever the band is and not change the price. Uh -huh. If it comes down, it's monthly pricing anyway. Um, so yeah, if, if your spring enrollment is less than your fall enrollment, um, absolutely, we'll just adjust it down to whatever band you're in for, for, for spring. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I really, um, I'm thinking that, and that's Michelle had to step out. We're really wanting our instructors to be able to look at this option, mm -hmm. um, see how, you know, it meets their needs. So is there a way that we can do that for them? Yeah, what, what I would recommend um, is I, I'd love to actually just do a demo. Let, let's go ahead and schedule a time. Is, is there a time when we can pull folks together or when they'd be able to log into something similar where we focus on the teacher side? Let's, um, let's see, how about, They have students until May the, possibly till the 24th. What mm. about the week of, what about say May 29th? Yeah, May 29th, I have really good flexibility. Is there a, a time of day that looks best? Uh, could we say uh, maybe nine or 10 a.m.? Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Um, and uh, just to double check, you are central time, correct? That is correct. Okay. Could we make it 9 a.m. Central, which will be 10 o'clock Eastern time? Yes, that would be great. Okay, perfect. I'm putting that on my calendar right now. OK, 
Okay, great. And I will get a, a calendar invitation to you for that. Now, should I noticed you said you were recording it. Should I also share that recording or just let them go through the demo and ask questions then? Yeah, you know, you're more than welcome to share the recording. Um, what? Okay. Yeah, and, and, and if anybody is able to, I, I find sometimes it's a challenge to get folks to, <laughs> to, to, to log in on their own time and look at things. Um, but okay. yeah, let's, let's give it a shot. Um, I, what I'm going to do is, um, I'll actually just- I would just love to be able to log in if that's an option. We can do that. My hesitation, number one, it is sometimes again hard to get people to spend their time doing it. And the second okay. is we've not customized it at all for your environment. And so right, right. sometimes when a teacher logs in and they don't see exactly what they need, um, that, right. that sours them on it before we have a chance to explain, here's what we do when we set it up. Um, I'm not opposed okay. to giving you an account, but, but I, don't want, I don't want a negative first impression because somebody misunderstands what they're seeing. Absolutely, yes, that's understood. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can definitely let them know that there are many things that are moldable to our needs. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Okay, well, no problem. Yeah, let me, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and get you, um, and again, I'll set this up as uh, maybe an, an admin account uh, as okay. well as a teacher account. Okay. Um, so you can, yeah, log in with those yourselves. You can share them if you want. Um, but just try to set that expectation for folks that you're going to have a chance to look at it and answer questions and that this would be customized Absolutely. to your environment. Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anything Thank else you. I can do for you right now or are we good to go? I think that's it, Gary. Thank okay. you. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. I well, um, time. All right, well, perfect. Yeah, so watch for an email from me. Um, I have a couple other things that may be late tonight, uh, but watch for an email from me with th these details. And if any questions come up, uh, you know, we're, we're a month away from the next one, so please don't hesitate to reach out and, and ask if, if you have okay, any great. questions at all. All right? That, that sounds good. Thank you so much. Excellent. My pleasure. Have a great afternoon. All right. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.